Grace and peace to you all, my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. This week, we were given a big trash bag full of used DVDs and videotapes. And as we were going through this bag, the first one that drew Toby's attention was a DVD called Sky High. And as many of you know, superheroes hold a very special place in our house. So when Toby saw those spandex-clad, cape-wearing teenagers on the front of that DVD case, he decided right then that this was the movie he wanted to watch again and again and again. However, as this movie developed, we realized that it wasn't your typical superhero flick. The typical superhero movie you see is about mighty and powerful individuals that can be depended on to save the day. But as Sky High's story evolved, it was evident that the heroes of that story we're going to be the crew of weaker, less popular students at Sky High, known as the Sidekicks, or hero support, if you wanted to be politically correct. <laughs> the movie went from being about the extraordinary to being about the ordinary. It became the quintessential underdog story. And I was OK with that. After all, everybody loves an underdog. Believe me, I know. I'm a lifelong Chicago Cubs fan. <laughs> we love to hear and see stories of people who seem to defy all the odds. People who somehow transcend normalcy and even mediocrity in inspiring ways. Friends, today I would like to recommend to you a book full of underdogs. This book, this book, the Holy Bible, is an anthology of underdog stories. As much as we love underdogs, the entire biblical witness reminds us that God loves them even more. Moses, for instance, he wasn't even supposed to make it past infancy, let alone lead his people, lead God's people to the promised land. And then there was David, a little shepherd boy from little town of Bethlehem. He watched his brothers go off to war, and then he slays the giant and becomes the king through whose line our Messiah is promised. And then there is Mary, this poor and insignificant young girl from an isolated farming community who would become the mother of the Messiah. How cool is that? You see, the story that we hang the eternal state of our souls on is a true life underdog story. Mary goes from being poor and insignificant to being an object of ridicule and shame. As an unmarried pregnant woman, she could have been stoned to death, but God uses yet another underdog to protect her and to provide an up upbringing for his son, Joseph whose royal ancestry meant absolutely nothing to his friends and neighbors. He lived the average life of a tradesman in that small community of Nazareth. This seemingly ordinary man was called by God to be Mary's husband and protector and Jesus' foster father. His decision to stand by Mary despite her supposed indiscretion would not 
have won him any steps up that social ladder. So of course the miracle that Mary and Joseph were going to participate in could not happen in a small town like Nazareth. So God had to call Mary and Joseph out of Nazareth but not to a place of greater import, but to the comparable hamlet of Bethlehem. God calls his chosen parents from the boonies to the sticks. Today's prophecy from Micah reminds us that this small forgotten town will see the birth of yet another king. Of all the underdog stories that we love, this one should be our favorite. But why does God reveal him in the, himself in this way? Why doesn't he offer salvation to a savior that would be easily recognizable and who would demand loyalty and obedience? I think that a God who is known only to the eyes and the values of a fallen world, would prove himself nothing but an idol. For the incarnation of God to be truly incarnational, God with us, Emmanuel, would have to be born into the common and the ordinary. And a look around reminds us that the common and the ordinary are full of things like poverty and pain, shame and struggle. And it is those things that are redeemed by the birth we remember this week. Brothers and sisters, part of my Christmas season devotions always include the reading of a Christmas sermon preached by Martin Luther. And this sermon includes the following quote. She starts out on the journey with Joseph, her husband. Then when they came to Bethlehem, they were the most insignificant, the most despised people, as the gospel author indicates. They were obliged to make room for everybody until they were shown into a stable and had to be satisfied to share with animals a common hostel. Thus God indicates that he pays no attention at all to what the world is, has, or can do. And on the other hand, the world proves that it knows nothing at all of God and pays no attention to what God is, what God has, and what God does. You see, brothers and sisters, our best and our brightest will never cure what truly ails us. We need God for that. No eloquent head of state will ever legislate true justice into existence. No mighty military leader will ever force true peace onto a people. And even the world's brightest doctors can hold death off for only so long. But justice, peace, and eternal life are exactly what God brings forth in this baby's birth. The hymn that Mary sang today, the hymn that the church has always sung with Mary in its daily prayer, is as clear a summation of God's good news as we'll find in all of Scripture. Listen again to a part of Mary's song. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. 
He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. You see, God exalts the lowly and calls the mighty to place themselves in his hands so that they too may truly be exalted. And the world may see its Messiah through those who trust in his care. This is what it means to gather around the manger this Christmas season, to humble ourselves before this child in the hay. This is what it mean, means to sing with Mary her song, so we may be blessed and God may be known. And my prayer for all of us this Christmas season as the birth of the Christ child approaches is that we can all find ourselves as underdogs and humble a state, so we may fully, more fully know God's presence and participate in his marvelous work. Thank you. <laughs>